Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 11 for chapter 2. In this video, we will go through a couple of counterexamples on the issue of existence and uniqueness of solutions for nonlinear differential equations. The first example concerns the loss of uniqueness. We consider the following equation. dy dt equal to some function f of ty, and the function is given as negative t over y. And we have initial condition given y at negative 2 equal 0. Now let's first take a look and see what we can understand. We see that the initial condition is given at t equals negative 2 and y equals 0. And we see that when y is 0, what is the function f? Well, unless t is 0, otherwise um, this is um, infinite. And that is given as the initial condition for my problem at where the dy dt will be infinite. So the conditions of the theorem, they are not satisfied. And then we would naturally expect something could go wrong. And let's see what can go wrong. So we also observe that this equation is actually separable. This is a function of t over a function of y, and we can easily separate it and try to solve it. Okay, so let's separate the variables and moving all the terms involving y to the left hand side and the involving t to the right hand side. We get this equation. Let's find the antiderivatives and then we find that this is half y square half t squared with a negative sign plus a constant. So we can um, move the y and t to the left hand side and multiply by 2 and then we'll have a 2 times an arbitrary constant which we just put as an arbitrary constant. And now this arbitrary constant c can be determined by our initial condition. So let's put that in. So the initial condition is t is 0, y is negative 2. So c would equal to 0 plus 4, and therefore c is 4. So we have the implicit solution, y squared plus t squared equals 4. We recognize now that this equation describes a circle in the yt plane centered at the origin and the radius would be square root of 4 which is 2. Okay so here I um, provide a drawing and this is the um, t y axis and this is a circle with radius 2. So here's 2, here is negative 2 and then here is uh, y negative 2 and then y2. So where is the initial condition for the problem. So we see that the initial condition is given at t is negative 2, y is 0. So is at this point. So looking at the circle at this point, we see that the tangent line here is vertical. That means um, the derivative is infinite. Now, choosing this point as the initial condition, we would have two possibilities. One would be the solution start to move upward and complete the upper half of the circle. Another way is the solution could move downward and complete the lower semicircle. And uh, we can even write out the solutions in explicitly. Um, moving the t square to the right hand side then we have y square equal 4 minus t square and uh, we can take the um, square root and we'll get the two branches one is taking the positive square root 
and the other is taking the negative square root. And then both of them would satisfy the equation and the initial condition. Okay, so we see that we lose the uniqueness of solutions. Here we have two solutions, not one. Okay, so um, that's for this example, showing that for nonlinear equations, the solution might not be unique. Now let's take a look at another example, which also concerns the loss of uniqueness, but um, much more severe than the previous example. So here's the initial value problem. We have y prime equal y to the power one third, and then the initial condition is y zero equals zero. First, we see that um, we can study the direction of field, and then we see that when y equals zero initially, then y prime equals zero, and therefore y equals zero as a constant is a solution. So we usually call these solution trivial because it's identically zero, it makes everything automatically satisfied. Now let's consider the following function. Um, we call it yc because it carries a parameter c. So for t less than c, the function is zero. And for t bigger than c, the function is this one. That is um, two times t minus c divided by three to the power three over two. And here c bigger than zero is any constant. Now we can um, rather easily verify that y of c is a solution to this initial value problem for any choice of c. We can verify this for the solution on the two intervals where the yc is defined piecewisely. So let's consider t bigger than c when y takes this form and let's compute the y prime. So differentiating this one, and one can simply use um, the chain rule. Okay, so what we have is this number here, three over two, times what's in here to the power of this minus one, which is half. And then this one dip and differentiating t gives me a constant 2 over 3 and I carry here. And 2 over 3 cancels that and we just get this guy here. And then we notice that um, and then we notice that what we have here is exactly this one to the power one third. So it's exactly y to the power one third, which is the equation. So this function here on this interval satisfies the equation. Now let's check for the part t less than c. y is just constant, zero. So y prime is zero, which is y to the uh, power one third. So we also satisfy the equation. And then um, we can check that the solution is continuous at t equals c. So for t less than c, taking the limit to t equal to c, y would be zero. And then taking the limit on the right, as t approaches c for t bigger than c, and we see this is zero. So um, the function um, yc of t would be zero when um, t equals c. Okay. And then finally, the initial condition of my problem is also satisfied because it's just zero here. So what have we discovered? Basically, um, we can now conclude that for this initial value problem, there exist infinitely many solutions taking this form where for any C 
constant bigger than zero, this is a solution. Okay, so this is a rather um, extreme example where infinitely many solutions exist for one single initial value problem. Here I provide some um, solutions in a graph. Um, this is the graph. Down here is the t-axis, up here is the y-axis, and uh, we know that um, y equals zero, the constant, is a solution. And then if I pick c to be zero right here, then I know that that polynomial that grows is a solution. And then if I pick c to be 0 0.5, then I have a solution starting from 0, which remains 0 all the way to here, and then follow the red curve. And then, of course, I can pick c to be 1. Then I have the solution, which is 0 from 0 to 1. And then at 1, it bends and then follows that, um, the solution that is that polynomial. Okay, and in fact, um, from our analysis, we know that at any point here, you, you can have a solution that is zero, and then at any point you say, okay, I changed my mind, and then you follow this curve up, and that is also a solution. Okay, so let's look at one more example where um, the solution blows up. Okay, so consider this very simple nonlinear equation. y prime equal y square and the uh, initial condition y0 is 1. So first we note that the function here we call the f is y square which is defined for all t and y and it's continuous and smooth. And we also observe that the equation is separable and one can easily solve it by separation of variables. And let's do that. And moving y squared to the left, I have 1 over y squared dy. And moving a dt over, I get a dt. And then we integrate. The integral of 1 over y squared gives me negative 1 over y. And the right-hand side, the integral will be t, and then I add a constant. And then um, I can write this further in explicit form by taking the inverse of both sides and multiply by negative 1. Then, then I found that yt is negative 1 over t plus c. And then we can... Um, find the constant c by the initial condition, y0 is 1. So um, we have that, put t to be 0, 0 plus c down here is c, so negative 1 over c is 1. And so we found that c is negative 1. Okay, so we can put that back in and then we have our solution. yt is uh, negative 1 over t minus 1. And now here comes the question. Can this solution be defined for all t? Well, we see that not really, right? So um, as t grows, so initially t is 0, as t grows bigger and bigger, and uh, the y of t becomes uh, um, bigger and bigger in magnitude. And then um, as t approaches 1 from the left-hand side, and then we see that y actually blows up to infinity. And therefore, the solution cannot be defined passing this point t equals 0. Okay, so we call this um, blow up of solutions. So finally, um, I would like to comment that um, this type of uh, blow-up phenomenon is uh, quite well known for nonlinear equations. The blow-up can take forms of uh, various
terms being blow up. Here is the solution blowing up. And it could also be the gradient of the solution blows up and, and several other situations. Okay, but that's um, beyond the topic of elementary differential equations. So we just mentioned that. Okay, so that's all I have to say for um, these counterexamples. Um, next time we will get practical and uh, go into applications, meaning we'll study word problems of uh, various kinds. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.